So uh, we're going to continue talking about the judges today. And uh, the, we're going to start with the first of the judges, whose name was Othniel. And uh, we, we did an overview of the judges last time. Uh, and, but now we're going to get more into the specifics. So uh, before we actually talk about Othniel, I want to talk a little bit about Caleb. Because Othniel is related to Caleb. And I, it's, I think, an important part of, of this story. So when we talk about Caleb, we're talking about one of the two spies that went into the land when there were 12 spies sent in, and the people rebelled and uh, refused to, to trust God to go in and fight uh, because 10 of the spies said, we can't do it, there's giants, we won't be able to defeat these people. Uh, and But Joshua and Caleb are the two who stood up and said, no, if God has promised to give us the land, we can take it. Well, in Numbers chapter 14, in verses 22 through 24, uh, God says, Because all these men who have seen my glory and the signs which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness and have put me to the test now these ten times— and have not heeded my voice, they certainly shall not see the land of which I swore to their fathers, nor shall any of those who rejected me see it. But my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit in him, and has followed me fully, I will bring into the land where he went, and his descendants shall inherit it. So we, we see here that Caleb is one of the only two from that generation, uh, he and Joshua, who get to go into the land. And he says it's because he has a different spirit in him and has followed God fully. So that's, that's the character we see in Caleb. He was a unique person in the nation of Israel. In Joshua chapter 14, uh, once they go into the land, uh, we, we have Joshua talk, sorry, Caleb talking to Joshua. And in verses 16 through 14, it says, Then the children of Judah came to Joshua in Gilgal. And Caleb, the son of Jephunneh the Kenizzite, said to him, You know the word which the Lord said to Moses, the man of God, concerning you and me in Kadesh Barnea. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land, and I brought back word to him as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. So Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land where your foot has trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's forever because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said, these forty-five years, ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses, while Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now here I am this day, eighty-five years old. As yet I am as strong this day as on the day that Moses sent me, just as my strength was then, so now is my strength for war, both for going out and for coming in. Now therefore give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day, for you heard in that day how the Anakim were there, and that the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me, and I shall be able to drive them out, as the Lord said." And Joshua blessed him and gave Hebron to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, as an inheritance. Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, to this day, because he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. All right, so we, we see that it, uh, here Caleb remembers back uh, 45 years before when he and Joshua stood up for the truth uh, that God could give them the land. And now it's 80, he's 85 years old, but he says God has blessed him so that he is just as strong as when he was 40. 
And he asks for this mountain to go in and fight the Anakim, the giants. Uh, so at 85 years old, Caleb was going to go fight giants and fortif take fortified cities. Uh, he was ready to do this work because he still trusted God just as much as 45 years before this. So we see this great character in Caleb. Um, and so he's given this uh, city of Hebron. Uh, and, and so that becomes his territory. Now, when we talk about Othniel, who's the first of the judges, um, his background is that he's actually a relative of Caleb. So in Joshua 15, in verses 13 through 19, it says, Now to Caleb the son of Jephunneh he gave a share among the children of Judah, according to the commandment of the Lord to Joshua, namely Kirjath Arba, which is Hebron. Arba was the father of Anak. Caleb drove out the three sons of Anak from there, Sheshai, Ahiman, and Talmai, the children of Anak. Then he went up from there to the inhabitants of Debir. Formerly the name of Debir was Kirjath Sefer. And Caleb said, he who attacks Kirjath Sefer and takes it, to him I will give Aksa my daughter as wife. So Othniel, the son of Kinaz, the brother of Caleb, took it, and he gave him Aksa his daughter as wife. Now it was so when she came to him that she persuaded him to ask her father for a field. So she dismounted from her donkey, and Caleb said to her, What do you wish? She answered, Give me a blessing, since you have given me the uh, given me land in the south, give me also springs of water. So he gave her the upper springs and the lower springs. So now we, we find the first mention of Othniel. And it says that he's the son of Kinaz, the brother of Caleb. The way this is worded in both English and in the original Hebrew, it's not clear if Kinaz was the brother of Caleb or Othniel was the brother of Caleb. Now, Kinaz is, is not the name of Caleb's father. Uh, his father's name was Jephunneh. But in the previous passage that we looked at, it said that he was a Kinezite. And that may be what this means, that he's Othniel is the son of Kinaz. So he is perhaps the brother of Caleb himself. Othniel may be. That seems to be the most common view uh, but also it's possible that he was uh, the son of Caleb's brother. But he, he marries the daughter of Caleb. Now, this may sound wrong according to the law of God, but it wasn't actually part of what was prohibited. In Leviticus 18, it, it says you, you were not to have sexual relations, or, which would include getting married to someone who's your mother, your father's wife, your sister, either from your father or from your mother, your granddaughter, either from your son or from your daughter, your father's sister, your mother's sister, your uh, father's brother's wife, your daughter-in-law, your brother's wife, uh, both a woman and her daughter, a granddaughter of your wife, uh, or your wife's sister if your wife is still alive. So and when you're having more than one wife, which was allowed under the law of Moses. But neither uh, marrying your brother's daughter, uh, nor marrying your cousin or the, the daughter of your father's brother, was prohibited under the law of Moses. Uh, it seems, you know, in my memory, I thought it was. But when I went back and looked, it, neither one of those is actually prohibited. So they were legal. Uh, to, to marry under the law of Moses. Now, I know that under uh, various cultures, that would, I think most cultures today probably, would see that as not a great thing or not an ideal thing. Perhaps it would be looked on with some disapproval, uh, if not major disapproval in certain cultures. But in Israel, this was not a problem uh, at this time. All right. But now in, in Judges chapter 3, we read about Othniel as a judge. So we see his, his uh, relationship to 
Caleb. He he not only is a close relative of Caleb, but he even marries Caleb's daughter. But now here in, in Judges chapter 3, let's read verses 1 through 11. It says, Now these are the nations which the Lord left, that he might test Israel by them, that is, all who had not known any of the wars in Canaan. This was only so that the generations of the children of Israel might be taught to know war, at least those who had not formerly known it, namely five lords of the Philistines, all the Canaanites, the Sidonians, and the Hivites who dwelt in Mount Lebanon, from Mount Baal Hermon to the entrance of Hamath. And they were left that he might test Israel by them to know whether they would obey the commandments of the Lord, which he had commanded their fathers by the hand of Moses. Thus the children of Israel dwelt among the Canaanites, the Hivites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, sorry, I said Hivites before, the Hittites, and the Hivites and the Jebusites, uh, verse 6, and they took their daughters to be their wives and gave their daughters to their sons, and they served their gods. So the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. They forgot the Lord their God and served the Baals and Asherahs, Therefore the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he sold them into the hand of Cushan Rishathaim, king of Mesopotamia. And the children of Israel served Cushan Rishathaim eight years. When the children of Israel cried out to the Lord, the Lord raised up a deliverer for the children of Israel who delivered them, Othniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he judged Israel. He went out to war, and the Lord delivered Cushan Rishathaim of Mesopotamia into his hand, and his hand prevailed over Cushan Rishathaim. So the land had rest for forty years. Then Othniel the son of Kenaz died. All right, so we see him here as someone God raised up as a deliverer for the children of Israel. Once they repented, they cried out to the Lord because they've been oppressed by Cushan Rishathaim from Mesopotamia for eight years. Mesopotamia is this area between the, the rivers, the Euphrates River and the Tigris River. It's part of the Fertile Crescent, uh, but uh, the, the, it's a little ways out from Israel, but apparently you know, this is the area that a lot of their oppressors are going to be from Babylon um, and, and uh, the Medo-Persian Empire, same area, but uh, right now it's just called Mesopotamia, and this king has conquered them and is oppressing them for eight years until Othniel delivers them. So what led to the oppression that they received? What bad decisions did Israel make? Well, they married these idolatrous people, giving their daughters and taking their daughters uh, being mentioned as a problem. So it doesn't matter if you're marrying someone as a man who's a Christian. So think about it from our standpoint. If you're the man and you're the Christian, but you're marrying an idolatrous person or an ancestor worshiper, um, or you are the woman who's marrying a man who is idolatrous, an ancestor worshiper, serves another god. Uh, either way, it is a bad decision. It is a bad choice. And they served their gods. They acted like the people they spent time with. That's, that's what we do. We spend time with people and we're influenced by them. But if you compare that with Othniel, so the Israel spending time with the idolatrous people, Othniel is spending time with Caleb, who's a man of a different spirit or an extraordinary spirit. They're marrying idolatrous people. He married the daughter of Caleb. So he's he's marrying into a family where people have proven that they, they trust God and they serve him. The people ended up serving idols. Othniel served God. They suffered from oppression, and he was able to deliver them from oppression because of his relationship with God. And so you can see the, the difference in what Israel as a whole chose to do and what Othniel as an individual chose to do. And we need to make the same kind of choice. We're going to be heavily influenced by those that we spend time with. We're going to marry the people that we spend time with. And our faith is going to be affected by those that we marry or we spend time with. It can be for good or for bad. So choose to spend time with and to marry those 
that are going to influence you in the direction you know is right. Make sure that you're not with the idolatrous people, with the people of the world, with the people who follow men rather than God, but follow those with an extraordinary spirit. Spend time with them, uh, those that really trust God, those who really listen to him and do what he says and end up marrying into that kind of an environment. All right, that's the lesson for today. Thank you.